Okay, so I don't get it. Why would Canadian Prepper go to these lengths to build this bug out bag and then intentionally leave off one of the most important bits of survival gear from the five C's of survival? I mean, is he trolling us or what? Now listen, if you're new here, welcome to the show. When we do these bug out bag reviews, our primary goal is to simply ensure that the five C's of survival are being accounted for. And then if we have more time as a secondary goal, we look at any unique or standout features of the survival kit that we got under the good old microscope. All right, let's go ahead and dive in and see what he's got in this new bug out bag. And to be clear and straight up and fully transparent before we get started, I may say something along the course of this review that might hurt some feelings, might offend somebody, might make somebody angry. And I personally accept zero responsibility for that. Because if you are disturbed by what somebody says on YouTube, then I don't know. I guess this disturbance is with you. But if you think you can handle a critique of Canadian Prepper, then this video is, uh, yeah, definitely for you. So let's go. Three, two, one, lay. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. You know, this is my most requested video topic. Every day I get countless emails requesting that I put something like this together for people while well, I've finally done it. So let's talk about it. Oh, he's got a new intro. So in an ideal situation, any time disaster struck, you would simply shelter in place. Unfortunately, you may have to vacate the premises. You may need to get out of Dodge. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Okay, let me just go ahead and pause it right there. And yeah, he's absolutely right. This is a great point. Your first move really should be to do nothing if you are at your primary residence. You're going to want to shelter in place and ride out that storm. Now, of course, sometimes you may actually have to bug out. You have to get out of Dodge. And that can be a kind of a sketchy thing. And sometimes, you know, to be honest with you, I've been through this before. And sometimes that decision can be kind of tough. I mean, it can be a tough call, right? So what I suggest doing if you are faced with that scenario is using the pace keyword. It's going to make that decision process a lot simpler and clearer. But I digress. Let's go ahead and keep moving. So I get countless emails asking me if I could put together a pre-made bug out bag and just sell it all as one thing for people. I've been against this idea for the longest time because I do think it's a great way to familiarize yourself with all of the essentials that you are going to need for survival by building your own survival kit. And your needs are going to be different than mine. So me building a survival kit is going to be totally different than somebody who perhaps lives in Florida. Here it gets really cold, so we got to focus on winter survival. There, not so much. It's important that you customize your bug out bag to suit your needs. But what I've built here is a foundational kit that you can use and you can build upon and you can supplement with whatever you need. These are things that you're going to need in any environment, no matter where it is. What I wanted to build. Yeah, so I'm going to pause it right there. And yeah, so he's absolutely right. You know, the main goal should be to have that foundational survival gear that's going to suit you and serve your purposes in any sort of environment. This is what I've been preaching for years. I got some videos on it. Please be sure at the end of this video to check out the playlist I got on Bug Out Bag. And I literally break this down and talk about using the five C's of survival to build your basic bug out bag and then layer on that custom gear or those items that are particular for the mission at hand. So based on what he said, I expect to see a bug out bag built on the five C's of survival. Now, if you're not familiar with what the five C's are, I'm going to list them right here, right? So as we go through this video, I kind of want you to keep an eye on that and make sure that the five C's are being covered. And I'm going to actually kind of just like check mark them as we go through this review. But from here, we're going to go ahead and fast forward a little bit because he goes into this process of talking about, you know, how he, he, he sources the stuff and his, his mindset behind building these pre-made bug out bags. And I'm really interested to see what he has to offer here because most of the time, in my experience, um, pre-made bug out bags are absolutely total 100% garbage. And you'd be lucky for that gear to last you 24 hours in an actual legit survival situation. But let's go ahead and jump ahead. He's got this broken down in a chapter. So we'll go ahead and dive into the backpack section of the video. I do suggest that you go check out his entire video in its complete entirety 
and not just trust what I have here all chopped up, right? So let's go ahead and get back in it. Okay, all right. So he's going ahead and getting into this here. And uh, yeah, you know, it's fun. This pack looks quite familiar because I used to have one. This is the Maxpedition Prepared Citizen Classic. And I got this back, I believe it was during uh, COVID, actually. And, you know, to be honest with you, great pack. Um, I thought it was good, but after a little bit of use, I just kind of ditched it. Because, to be honest with you, once you put anything, uh, any decent amount of weight, like over 20 pounds in it, it just is uncomfortable. There's no rigid back panel. The straps are super thin and uh, very narrow. So they end up digging into your shoulders. And it's just, you know, it's just an uncomfortable fit. And, then, you know. Trust me, it's a good pack, but um, yeah, my experience with it wasn't really like that stellar. There we go. Right, yeah, you know, this would not be a Canadian prepper bug out bag without a wool blanket. That is definitely uh, one of his uh, one of his go tos here. And look, he's got some Titan survival cord, which is also good. So yeah, um, we can go ahead, I guess, and check cordage off the list. And he's going to talk about this a little bit here. But uh, Titan Survivor Cord is just really, really good stuff. Top quality. He talks a little bit about getting it mixed up with some of the knockoff brands. Survivor Cord is really good to go. And um, yeah, dig it. Okay, now we don't have a tarp in this kit. Again, I would encourage you to supplement with whatever you might need. But we do have a Titan Survival Emergency sleeping bag. So if you can combine this with your wool blanket, these things work really well. Sometimes they work too well and you get a lot of condensation buildup. But if you pair it with a wool blanket, that's going to keep the condensation away from you. So you wrap yourself in your wool blanket. You put this over top, you're going to stay warm in most conditions. We also have a heat reflect poncho if you need to be on the move this does stand out a little bit you're going to want to use your discretion on when you want to actually be donning something like that because it may draw a lot of attention to yourself now move okay i gotta pause it right there because he just said something really interesting so he just literally said unless i misunderstood what he said he said there's no tarp included with the survival kit and to be honest with you I don't know how I feel about that. You know, um, he's got the emergency sleeping bag there. He's got uh, the poncho, the wool blanket. But, um, you know, I just don't get it, right? Um, and I'm not in his head. And he didn't really say why he didn't include the tarp. That is one of the essential components of the five C's of survival. That is the cover, right? So why he didn't include that, I don't know. Me personally, what I would have done is I would have had a uh, mill spec poncho that can be used as a poncho and or a shelter and then go ahead and pair that with an emergency like bivy sack or something of that nature and you're pretty much good to go but yeah i don't have no idea why he didn't include the tarp i mean there are some shelter related items here so technically i guess could we say that he's covered the cover part of the five c's of survival i don't know let me know down there in the comment section i guess i'll just give him credit for what he's got and, and just give it like a half check mark <laughs> all right let's keep moving Moving on to first aid, just a simple ultralight watertight medical kit. Inside this medical kit, there's a variety of different. Yeah, you know, some people might have an issue with the adventure uh, medical survival kits and stuff like that. These are just um, basic, and this would be something that you would want to add on and expand. But just for um, a pre made bug out bag, adventure medical kits, you know, not bad. Good to go, in my opinion. For medical. But you have all of your standard bandages. You have some antiseptic wipes, ways to clean wounds, some nitrile gloves. The full list of items will be in the description section below. The only other medical thing I throw in there is an Israeli bandage. I would encourage you to consider putting a tourniquet, some polysporin. You could put antibiotics to step it up. Yeah, so that's definitely good advice. You definitely want to have the tourniquet. You definitely want the Israeli bandage. And you can kind of build on that. Depending on what type of survival situation you expect to find yourself in, you may need more trauma-related medical items or not. A notch, that's up to you. This is just really bare bones for cuts and scrapes. We also throw in some whizzy wipes. On the street, they're called toilet paper tablets. This is kind of what I'm renowned for. <laughs> that is what he's famous for. I think that video was the first video I ever saw from Canadian Prepper, and if I'm... Uh, Remember correctly, we're talking millions and millions of views. That really what made him blow up. Um, and I mean, compressed towels, man, they're great. I use them all the time, and they have so many different uses.
Okay, now he's uh, moving on to the food here, and I'm interested to see what he has to offer here because in the previous review I did, he was rolling with the MREs and Mountain House meals. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, was, I, I really wasn't a big fan of that, so let's see how he breaks it down for this bug out bag. Would have been a one and done situation but we wanted to give you guys some good quality food because if you're going to be in a crappy situation the least you can have is a decent meal so we have a couple freeze-dried so he's got freeze-dried smoothies here this is interesting i didn't expect to see that i'll throw the nutritional specs up there on the screen so you have an idea um yeah yeah i did not expect that but maybe some good nutrients in there let's see what else what else he's got going on here and some of these things might just be added in there for um, selling points, right? Ah, yeah, right. Yes, caffeine, caffeine, energy, all that's good. Um, me personally, I choose to roll with a meth pipe. It's uh, way more effective and um, yeah, it just works better. But that's uh, that's just me. Different strokes for different folks. Um, yeah. <laughs> so what is that? Um, oh, check this out. This is a um, freeze-dried astronaut vanilla ice cream sandwich which another thing i just did not expect to see probably a good selling point because survival with a bug out bag and a scary environment it sounds terrible but hey if you throw an ice cream sandwich in there everything's going to be great because ice cream makes people happy right <laughs> yeah so interesting um i'm going to throw up all the nutritional facts for all these items so you guys can get a good idea of what we're getting into here Regardless of whatever expiration dates are on it, we have Peak Refuel, which is the best tasting pre-made freeze-dried food available on the market. It's also... So I have never tried this freeze-dried food before, but it does look good. Um, it does require water, obviously, to eat. And um, the good thing about it is I checked it out. It only requires 8 to 10 ounces of the water versus Mountain House, which is like it's twice as much. So that's cool. And uh, I guess the only thing I would say is, you know, these... These prepackaged meals are great, but they're expensive. They require water. And um, yeah, you know, uh, maybe there's better options out there. But for packing a pre made bug out bag, I honestly can't think of what else I would put in there, right? It seems to make sense. It looks like he has four of those or three. Sorry, my bad. Three. Oh, look. Hey, check it out. Look at this, guys. So he's got the good old stainless steel container. So guess what? That covers containers. So we can mark that off our list. We've covered another one of the five C's of survival. Take this cord off and you can set this right on a fire. So it's very multi-purpose. You can boil water in it. You can cook in it. It's going to allow you to transport water, wild edibles, whatever you want to carry in there. You can use that in conjunction with your life straw. This is going to filter out bacteria. So. Life straw? No, why? Why are people still with the life straw game? I don't get it. I love Why the life straw when you could go with a Sawyer Mini or a Sawyer Squeeze, which is going to have more options for filtering water, and the advertised claim for filter capacity is 100,000 gallons. Now, Canadian Prepper does make a good point where he says that advertised capacity for the filter probably not accurate but hey you know life straw we're talking four thousand gallons sawyer many fifty thousand even if that was off by fifty thousand or off by two thousand you would still have enough there to filter water for a three-day bug out adventure which is the standard time where you would expect a bug out bag to support you in a survival situation but yeah i mean i don't know life straw me personally it's all about the sawyer mini sawyer squeeze and one of these wide mouth hydration bags and that's really all i need we also throw in some Pro Camp Tech fire starter. This is my go-to fire starter. This is the easiest way to start fires. They have a variety of different. Yeah, I've never seen that fire starter before, but um, it looks promising. Me personally, I roll with the cotton balls, Vaseline, and that's what works for me. But uh, just be mindful when you go to buy cotton balls and Vaseline, and you might ask and be like, hey, where's the cotton balls and Vaseline? People might give you some weird looks. <laughs> just saying. Let's make sure that the combustion is actually covered. Yeah, so there you go. So check it out. So we got matches. We got the survival fire uh, striker, uh, the ferro rod, and um, the tender. So we can go ahead and mark combustion off of that list. And I would suggest adding a Bic lighter into the, uh, the scenario there and uh, be good to go, right? But yeah, this is solid. Uh, 
the combustion. Let's see here. What do we got? Oh, I think is, is going to be perfectly acceptable. Okay, this is a halt of force OK4 knife. This is a formidable knife that will last a long time. It'll take a, a lot of abuse. That doesn't mean you're going to be doing aggressive batoning and that this is going to be a one and done survival knife. This is not a survival lily apple one. It can perform a variety of different simple survival functions. Simple. Yeah, so that knife looks pretty cool. Actually, I have that knife, just not that knife in particular. Here, check it out. So this is my Mora Cansbowl, which as you can see here, if we compare this to the knife that he has there, the Holtevoort OK-1, it's basically identical. It's the same damn knife, right? We got the Scandi grind. We have the drop point. We have the 90 degree spine here for the fire steel. And both knives have a partial tang, okay? But the tang literally extends about this deep into the handle. So you can baton with this. And I've done that before. Uh, we're not talking like a rat tang where, where the tang only extends to like right there, which it would be a different story. That would definitely break for sure. Now, the big difference between these two blades, this one you see here and the one that he's showing, is the fact that this is stainless steel. The one that he has has a rust resistant coating and is not stainless steel. Me personally, in my experience with um, stainless steel versus the, the you know, the, uh, the rust resistant uh, coating, that coating comes off and then you got some issues. So I like the stainless steel personally, um, but that's just me. The price point on these blades is basically the same, basically the same blade, same design, all that. But yeah, digging the blade, um, solid tasks this is going to allow you to do that and there's some tactical applications because it is small enough a lot of those survival knives they look big and scary but they're not tactical okay so this is just a very simple thing and I, I let me ask you a question what is the difference between a tactical knife and a survival knife yes all right there is a silky just like a wool blanket this would not be a canadian prepper bug out bag without the silky saw guaranteed right and uh yeah i mean i love silky saws they're great but i will tell you from experience that if you are a noob to using the silky saw it cuts a little differently than your traditional folding saw and you may end up breaking that uh blade um yeah ask me how i know that <laughs> so what i personally would have done is instead of putting the silky in there i would have gone with a cheaper more robust, tougher option, which is the Baco Laplander. I have beat the living crap out of mine. I've had it for years, never broke it. It's never failed me. I personally would have gone with that, but yeah, I get it. He loves Silky, and I feel like there's a joke in there somewhere, Silky Boy. Uh, I don't know. It's probably not a family-friendly joke, but yeah, Japanese and their names for stuff is a little weird. Okay, so here, oh, so check this out. So he has these survival cards. That's pretty cool. I have some of those in one of my bug out bags and um, it's uh, like focused on not tying and edible plants. But these little survival cards are great to have. And I like the fact that he put in these right here because a newbie using this bag would, would really need to be familiar with these types of um, options like for, you know, disinfecting water, basic shelters, you know, love it. That's, that's uh, survival cards. I like it. Ah, here we go. Look, we got a flashlight. All right, so let's uh, let's see here. 200 lumens, right? You know, nothing crazy. Let's see what he has to say about this real quick. Flashlights like ones on the wall here that put out 100,000 lumens. When I first started prepping back in, what was it, 2008-ish, I think that the best flashlight was 200 lumens at that time. So this is, you know, depending on which era you're in, state of the art. Obviously right now, there's a lot better out there, but these are waterproof. They even have a USB rechargeable feature on them, so you can. Okay, so I got to pause that right there, guys. He says it's waterproof. I did a little research on this light, and um, yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's 200 lumens, and, uh, you know, it's 2023, so I guess every single flashlight has to be, you know, have a freaking solar panel on it and I mean, be USB rechargeable and all that kind of stuff. And that really sounds good on paper. But trust me when I tell you that these USB rechargeable flashlights, they have these openings on it for the USB port. Um, that is not tightly sealed, at least in my experience. For example, I have a Black Scout survival flashlight. Absolutely love this flashlight. Then I made the mistake of getting it wet. And guess what? It just has not functioned properly ever since. It barely holds a charge. 
And I really think the problem comes down to having that USB port exposed or not properly sealed up, water gets in there, and then you just end up having problems. So me personally, I like to keep it simple with the flashlight. Just get me a freaking flashlight with a AA battery or a CR123 and a headlamp, and I'm happy, right? Or you even forget about the flashlight and go with something like a headlamp from GearLight where it's adaptable, you can wear it on your head, or you can actually take it off and hold it like a flashlight. That's, that's my take on it. I don't know how you feel about it, me personally. I like to keep things as simple as possible and the, the less gimmicks that are on a survival item that's so important, like a flashlight, in my opinion, it's just better that way. Okay, so let's fast forward a little bit. We're coming down to the wire here. Okay, it looks like he has a radio, you know, and um, in, his, in, in his last bug out bag build, he had one of these crank style radios. I think they're pretty cool. I looked at a price point check on this particular one it was about 40 bucks. So do you absolutely need it? No. Is it more of a nice to have item? Sure. At the 40 buck retail price point, you know, I don't know how much he's getting these for um, in bulk, but um, yeah, you know, it is, it, I mean, it's okay. Sure. Meaning that you can pick up signals from hundreds of miles, if not thousands of miles away. And DOA, which is weather alert and weather band, it has heavy duty Dymo cranking. So it has a crank function. Yeah. So you're, and I believe it does have a USB port for charging. Okay. Yeah. That's good to go. Let's go ahead and see what else we got going on here. I think, um, okay. So check that out. That is the high level view of what you get in this survival kit. Drink it in. Let it soak in. This is what you're going to get if you go to Canadian Prepper's website and purchase this pre-made survival kit. Now, I'm sure the burning question that we all have here is how much is this pre-made survival kit from Canadian Prepper going to cost me? Woo! All right, let's go ahead and check it out. What do we got here? Woo! $629.99. Okay, take a deep breath. Yes, I know that price tag is pretty high, but we don't really have anything to compare it to. And I want to be fair to Nate if I didn't actually compare his price point and his survival kit with some of the actual top contenders on the market who are offering pre-made bug out bags that are not total garbage. So let's have a look at the competition. Uncharted Supply. 72 Pro Survival Kit, packed with survival gear, including first aid materials, food, tools, a lightweight shelter, flashlights, a radio, a water filter, and much more. Emergency Systems Bug Out Bag. The Echo Sigma is the Mac Daddy of emergency bug out bag choices, but the highlights include a thermal cocoon sleeping bag, water purification tablets, a SOG multi-tool, and all the little things that will keep you alive in the wilderness. Rhino Ready Companion. The Rhino Ready Companion is an advanced survival system designed for two people. In addition to 72 hours worth of food and water for two people. Now here's the fun part. Let's crunch those numbers. I went out to Amazon and I plugged in every single item in this survival kit to kind of come up with some sort of idea of how much this would cost if I just purchased it all my own. And it came out to being about $500. Now, of course, when you're running a business operation, you probably want to buy things in bulk. So you get that discounted price, so your profit margins go up. So his cost is obviously much lower than $500. But whatever the case is, retail costs look to be about $500. You can basically get all this stuff on Amazon if you felt so inclined. And if you have Amazon Prime, then the shipping is not such a big deal, right? Uh, or you can buy it directly from Canadian Prepper, and it's a I guess I guess it would be a quicker, more efficient way to go. It's just a one-stop source for an entire bug out bag kit, right? Minus, minus the tarp for some odd reason. So yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. I definitely like this bag more than the previous bag that he built. And it's definitely ranking right up there as a top contender with the rest of the competition that actually offers some decent bug out bags. But before you run off to the website and press that buy button, there's a few key points that I want you to remember. First and foremost, this is strictly a summer bug out bag with no ability to scale for winter operations. Unless you want to, I guess you could, maybe you could like hang a sleeping bag off the carry handle or something like that. I don't know. Now, secondly, and this is also very important, bear in mind, there is no cover in this survival kit. Now, why he didn't throw in a tarp 
or a military spec poncho like what I suggested. No idea, right? I just don't know. Maybe he mentioned in the video. I strongly suggest you go and watch that entire video and not just trust my opinion on the video as I chop up his content, right? So there's that. Now, another thing to also keep in mind is the fact that this bag, the small size is really good, but then you really can't put much in it based on my experience beyond, beyond like 20 to 25 pounds. And it might be nice to be able to stuff a little more in there. I don't know. My, my experience with the pack was that it didn't have a rigid back panel. You can kind of rig that yourself if you wanted to with a stiff sheet of thick plastic. And then the shoulder straps were just so thin and narrow. It just was not a comfortable fit. I mean, for anything longer than maybe like a couple miles. And then finally, another point to remember is once this bag is fully packed out, I'm guessing like it is full of gear. There may not be much room for you to put any of your custom gear in there, any tools that you may want for the mission at hand. So what is the final verdict on this pre-made bug out bag from our good friend, Canadian Prepper? Is it worth $630? What does it rate on a scale of one to 10? And just imagine a survival situation where you just have to grab this blindly, trust in what he has in it, and head off into an unseen future. Would you feel comfortable doing that? Maybe so, maybe not. Definitely would, would want to have a tarp in there. <laughs> but uh, me personally, you know, I would give this bag probably a five or six. There's definitely some stuff that I would do differently. Obviously, I mentioned that, but I like this bag a lot more than his other bag, which was twice as big. And unironically enough, the way he had it packed out, it could only support him during summer. So I like this bag. I like the fact that I could, it is obviously a dedicated summer bug out bag it's much smaller and yeah it's got some decent gear in it and i think it would be a good fit for somebody who is uh maybe a total noob to prepping and survivalism a bug out bag needs a bug out bag like yesterday for a maybe emergency situation or whatever the case is got 600 plus dollars burning a hole in his pocket and he doesn't really want to put much thought intention or uh process into building a bug out bag he just doesn't want to take the time maybe he just doesn't want to maybe he can't right and to his credit canadian prepper did mention in the beginning of his video that obviously the best way to go is to source all your own stuff go through the learning process and get that knowledge and experience versus what many people do with their pre-made bug out bags is they'll purchase it it will go in the closet and collect dust and never be used and that would be really sad if you spent 600 plus bucks on this survival kit and you never used it oh my god so yeah um what is the best survival kit that's out there on the market today guess what it's the one that you have in front of you right now the one that you train with the one that you work with and not the one that's collecting dust back there in the closet somewhere so yeah that's all i got for you guys hope you enjoyed the review and i'll see you in the next video